welcome back to our channel so for today's video we are going to do on monsoon and its current status of the monsoon in india as well as its impact on agriculture okay so um uh, and we're also going to uh, do some few questions we're going to solve them as well as we're going to explain some of the questions and uh, which is very important from the exam point of view, especially for this agrometrology. I think at least about one or two questions, high chances of at least minimum of two questions coming from this topic. Okay, so guys, watch this video till the end. My name is Hansa Nora Sama, and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture, and I've also completed my post graduation in nematology in agriculture. Okay, so before going further, if you guys are new to this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications and do share with your friends and if you guys have enjoyed this session, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well. So um, in the first slide, we are going to talk something about this monsoon, how uh, so there has been an increase in sowing uh, because of the good monsoon by 87%. So we're just going to have a rough talk and rough overview about the uh, monsoon in general, right? As well as in the uh, Indian economy and agriculture. So the first line here says about third of the India's manufacturing output, which makes up about 18% of the country's gross domestic product is linked to agriculture and therefore into the food, right? And the second point here is the monsoon, it is a lifeboat uh, basically for Indian agriculture and it depended on about two trillion dollars of economy and at least half of the farmlands are rain fed and when we're going to talk about rain fed rain fed areas are the areas or the farms where there is no facility for irrigation no irrigation facilities so they are totally dependent on rainfall for the crop production all right and now this in this agriculture sector they also account for about 14 percent of the country's uh 2.7 trillion economy which is the when one uh, which we were talking about and about 42 percent of the total employment so agriculture is a huge sector where it gives about majority almost half of the employment comes to agriculture uh, practices in india okay and 55 percent of the indus arable land dependent on precipitation right so when you say 55 percent it means basically it's a rain fed uh, farms or the rain fed lands okay um so 55 percent of it these are completely dependent on precipitation. So precipitation is just another word for rainfall, right? So I hope this is clear. And now let's move on to our new uh, slide where we're going to talk why there is an increase. How is there an increase? So basically, uh, due to the good rainfall in the month of June, the basic important key crop sowing areas that have increased by about 87%. And when we compare this percentage to the last year, so there has been increased by 87%. There is a huge range, right? So uh, rice cultivation is basically a curry crop. So uh, rice now in the modern season, rice is the major curry crop. So they are growing this at a huge amount of number at a huge area. Okay, so these are grown nearly 40% of the total area during the curry crop season and is up to about 39%. Okay, so the oil seeds they have risen more than three times of its normal production and the cultivation and as if you're going to talk about pulses then it has had an increase of about quadruplet which means four times okay so um these are something overview about these monsoons and uh, especially as rice is a very water intensive um crop so i think a lot of water is needed so due to this uh good rainfall in this year in june so the rice production is also high chances of rice production as well. Um, states like Bihar, Punjab, and Haryana, they are one of the major growing um, agriculture uh, states in our country where they have grown, uh, where they grow a lot of career season, uh, especially for rice, wheat, maize, all of that, pulses, especially these are the main good monsoon. They also helped the farmers increase the sowing area. Okay. So these are some of the overview and some of the impact that this monsoon has on the Indian economy is that these are um, basically uh, the monsoon, they have a direct impact on the country's agricultural GDP, right? So the planting of this key Karif 
a season which is the season for now or summer crops like rice, sugarcane, pulses and oil seeds they begin with the arrival or the onset of the monsoon rains in the June, right? Um, due to this, when we have a good production, when there's a good rainfall, the quality, the quantity of and the sowing area will also increase and therefore there will be higher production and in the end, they'll have a better income, right? So um, even uh, the summer crops, they also account for almost half of India's food output and delayed or the poor monsoon, it means issues and acceleration in the food inflation as well. So this is also a problem. So if we have a good output to the summer production, uh, the summer crops, they are the major crops for the Indus food output and there will be, if the monsoon is poor, the in production will also be lesser and therefore there will be uh, supply issues in supply as well as they will be having a food inflation. Okay, so another point that I want to focus here is that especially in a poor monsoon, they also not lead to demand or to weak demand or fast moving consumer goods. Uh, goods as well if the two wheelers the tractors rural housing the sectors all of these will also have an impact uh, by the import of these essential food staples and they will also force the government to take measures like loan waivers and thereby they will also put more uh, pressure on the finances as well another uh, important point is that a weak monsoon is strong uh, correlate is strongly correlated to the receding water table in the ground and this will also worsen the farmers distress okay so these are some of the impacts that this monsoon has on Indian agriculture and thereby on an Indian economy I hope this is clear um, now let's move on to another slide where I've just given some uh, variable uh, rainfall variability in India right so basically in rainfall uh, when we talk about the rainfall variability in India, the Indian subcontinent they continue uh, they receive its annual rainfall by by this peculiar phenomenon um, which we call it monsoons right and basically it consists of a cyclone that arises in the Indian Ocean okay and this uh, cyclone in the Indian Ocean they travel in the northeast direction towards that side and they enter the peninsulan region along its west coast so they come they go around the whole of peninsulan uh, Indian region and they enter to the west coast All right so some of the important um, a rainfall variability or the type of monsoon systems in India that we can find are uh, the major two ones are southwest monsoon as you can see here the first point and we also have a northwest monsoon right so we also have a uh, winter rainfall as well as in the summer rainfall and I'm just briefly talk about what this uh, southwest monsoon northeast monsoon etc all of these are okay so um this First thing, this southwest monsoon this is one of the most important of monsoon season in India, as it contributes to about about eighty to ninety percent of the total rainfall in the country. Uh, the mo this is one of the most important cycles, uh, cyclone cycles, and they usually occur in the months of June to September. Uh, this results in the month summer monsoon. So the southwest monsoon is also known as the summer monsoon right and now let's go to our second point which is on the northeast monsoon so uh in northeast monsoon these are this occurs during the month of september and right so the northwest monsoon they penetrate through northwestern india and um, but it stays a full month in the eastern india which is in bengal okay so um these are some of the things on the northwest monsoon i think that's enough for you all to know and we also have winter rainfall so in winter rainfall it is mostly restricted to the northern area or the northern indian and it is uh, basically uh suppose if it's in the hilly regions or the Himalayan regions then it will form in the form of a snow and if it's in plain regions then rains will come okay so these are something on the winter rainfall and now lastly we're going to talk about the summer rainfall so in summer rainfall uh, the, uh, the the rainfall is basically received in the march of march um to may okay so so these are just received during this summer months as a local storms right so these are mostly received in the southeast of the peninsula or in the west bengal right so basically the western indian side they are not generally um affected by this summer rainfall or they do not receive this rainfall okay so these are something important uh, points it's not really important from the exam point of view but i think uh, it's very important to at least know the types of monsoons in india that we have right 
And now let's go to another question. Uh, Go with the question series. The first option says the crops region, the crop region, they are classified based on average rainfall. Okay, and which of the following range comes under this semi-arid region? So based on the uh, rainfall received annually, these field, uh, they have classified these regions into different uh, regions. All right. Um, the first option given here is less than 500. Number B says 500 to 700. Number C is 750 to 1000. Number D is 1000 to 1500. And number E is more than 1500. Right, so the right answer for this is 700, 500 to 750. Okay, so based here, if you can see in the uh, lower table I've given on the left hand side, given the rainfall in the meter. And on the right hand side, you can see the climatic regions, all right? So um, this table is very important, guys. If you guys are learning it for the first time, please remember, uh, I would request you all to take a screenshot of the screen. And you can also jot it down if you're having a notepad beside you. You can just pause the video and jot it down, okay? So, okay, first thing, less than 500, it is in the arid region, all right? And we have 500 to 700 means in the semi-arid region. Uh, 750 to 1000 it's in the sub arid and more than 1000 it's in the humid so these are the list of the rainfall ranges as well as along with the regions right so i think it is very important from uh, high chances of this question coming in the exam okay um, another one here is on the reflected solar radiation without any change in quality is known as uh, the options given here are the radiation flux number b is emission power number c is albedo number d is latent heat and we also have number e which says sensible heat affection okay so guys the right answer for this is albedo so albedo what is this albedo it is basically just the measurement of the reflectivity of an object okay so the solar radiation enters the earth right and some of it, these are absorbed, and some of it, these are reflected back. So albedo is basically the reflected back without any change. These are the uh, radiations, solar radiations, which are reflected back without any change in its quantity or the quality, okay? So this is what an albedo is, okay? So in other words, it is a measure of the diffuse reflection of the solar radiation out of this total radiation received by an astronomical body. So, according to this definition, we can say that the every object has different albedo, okay? Uh, in this um, point, I've given, this is a very important point, I've given some of the albedo um, percentages of the different elements, okay? The first one is for the pure water. So, pure water has an albedo for about 5 to 20 percent, okay? And we're going to talk about vegetation, it's about 10 to 40 percent. And for soil, it's about 15 to 50 percent. And if we're going to talk about earth, we have about 34 to 43. So, roughly, we're going to talk a static average for earth then they say it's about 35%, okay? And if it's for clouds, then we have about 55%. And especially at this point, if you're gonna come down here, uh, when you talk about plants, for the plant community, this albedo, uh, the absorption of, the, sorry, the reflection of the solar radiation, they, they depend on, the first thing is on the age of the crop, the second is the percentage of the ground cover, as well as the last one is in the color and reflectivity of the foliage okay guys so these are some of the points on albedo that you guys need to remember another point is that here on earth especially the albedo effect they have a very significant impact on the uh, climate as well so uh, the lower the albedo right the lower the percentage of the albedo the more radiation from the sun that get absorbed by the planet okay and therefore the temperature will rise but if the albedo is higher then the earth is more reflective and more of the radiation is returned to the space and the planet cools so these are something on so you can you're getting the pattern right so vegetation it's about it's towards the highest so we have more vegetation ground cover then definitely the earth will be lesser um less cool um sorry will be cooler okay so um uh, in the question, you can see that we have already come across a few of the um, state, a few of the definite, a few of the terms, right? So now let us understand what these terms are. Okay. So basically, the first one is on the radiation flux. So uh, radiation flux, uh, these are the amount of radiant energy which are emitted as well as which are received and transmitted 
across a particular area and this is known as a radiant flux okay and the second one here is on the emissive power uh, so uh, when you have the radiant uh, radiation flux the density of this radiant flux is basically emitted by a source right and this is called as the emissive power okay so this is what an emissive power is and albedo we have already discussed what an albedo is and so now we have a latent heat so a latent heat is a part of an incident radiation on the surface if absorbed and while a part of it is reflected and the remaining is basically transmitted so these are um, latent heat what a latent heat is so we also have the last option was given here the last option given here is on the sensible heat advection right so sensible heat advection as well as its latent heat they are the types of this energy which are basically released or absorbed in the atmosphere okay but this latent heat these are most related to the changes in the phase of between the liquids the gases and the solids whereas in the sensible heat these are mostly related to the temperature which of, of the ga gas or the object with no change in the phase right so an example right so these are some of the terms the definitions of this so try to know the at least the definitions i think just knowing the definition will also suffice okay uh, all right so um next go to another uh, slide which is on which of the following crop is or are considered as a short day plant so this is a very easy question again but very important okay so the options given here are number a is potato we have b which is rice we have C, which is wheat, and D, maize, and E is all of the above, okay? So guys, the right answer for this is rice. Rice is the short day plant, right? So now let us talk about this duration of light, right? So based on the classification of this plant, these are based, classified into few groups, three groups mainly on the basis of photoperiodism. And if you're going to ask what is photoperiodism, a photoperiodism is a response of a plant to the relative uh, length of the day and night, and this is known as photoperiodism. Okay, and this photoperiodism it influences um, the plant character, the flower initiation or development, both have bulb and rhizome production, etc. So these are some of the fact, uh, some of the points where this photoperiodism they affect the plant. Okay, um, the first one here is in the short day plant. We also have long day and we have a day neutral plant right so the duration of the light they have a, a greater influence than the intensity for the canopy as well as for the final yields okay guys um, it is very important to consider this in the selection of the crop varieties especially the crop varieties and uh, the short day plants if you're going to look at that these are the plants which basically develop normally when they develop normally when the photo period is uh, less than the critical uh, maximum. Okay, so the critical maximum is less than 12 hours, right? So these are what short day plants are. And now when we look into these long day plants, these long day plants, these are the plants which develop and they produce normally when the photo period is greater than the max critical minimum, which is greater than the 12 hours. So these long day plants, they need a to a day length of about more than 12 hours and now the last one here is of the day neutral plant and the day neutral plant basically these are the plants or those plants which are not affected by the photo period okay i hope this is clear and now let's go to another a slide where i've just given some of the examples along with in the table along with the short day plan long day plan and day neutral okay so let me just read out for the short day plants, we have chrysanthemum, cockleberg, cosmos, dahlia, uh, goose food, we have hemp, morning glory, poinsettia. These are all flowers, okay, guys? And we have rice, soybean, we have tobacco, we have violets. So these are also another flowers. And now let us look into long day plants. For long day, we have barley, cabbage, carrots, henbane, we have lobster. These are also um, flowering plants. We have lettuce, onion. Petunia, poppy, these are flowers, radish, spinach, and wheat. And if you're going to look into day neutral plants, we have balsam. These are also flowers. Okay. And we have uh, beans, chilies, capsicum, uh, to be, sorry, tomato, cotton, cucumber, uh, maize, potato. All of these, these are 
under the D neutral signs. Okay. Um, all right. So now let's go to our fourth question. Who is the father of Agri mythology in India? Okay. So guys, um, the right answer for this is okay so before that before giving the right answer let me just read out the options uh, the options given here are number a is ms swaminathan we have b which is la ramdas c is bp pal and d is jw leather and number e is none of the above so guys the right answer for this is la ramdas so he is the man who is the uh, father of the agri mythology in India, right? So in that way, we try to study for the fathers of um, different of the allied subjects on the agriculture. We also have for soil science, agronomy, agriculture engineering. Try to list out all the fathers of the respective discipline and jot it down. Make it, I think it'll be more, much more easier for you guys if you can make a table out of this and you can study in that way, okay? So um, our last question here, I would like you all to answer for this again. So, which of the following range of the wavelength they help in photosynthetic and photoperiodic activity? So, we do have certain a range of wavelengths which help in certain uh, growth and pro production and for certain effects that it has or particular function that it has on the plant, okay? So, this question is based on that, right? So, uh, think carefully and drop it in the comment section, all right, guys? So, the options I'm going to read out, the number A is 720 to 510, number B is 1000, number C is more than 1000, number D is 500 to 400, number E is 400 to 300. Out of these, which one belongs to the range which helps in the photosynthetic as well as in the photoperiodic activity? If you guys know the answer, then do drop it in the comment section so that I'll be able to know. All right, guys, and before going, uh, let's just solve three of the questions quickly right so i've just given the questions here and i think it's quite small i don't know whether you guys are able to see or not if it's visible then but let me just increase the size of this right guys okay i hope this is more visible now okay so um number question number one was that indian institute of tropical meteorology iitm it is located in pune all right so it was established in the year of 1962 all right and question number two is wind speed is measured by anemometer rainfall is measured by rain gauge okay guys and we have a chemical which is used for artificial um rainfall i think this is an important question so you can Jot it down. I'm gonna put a star mark under this. And we also have um, the word monsoon. It is derived from Arabic language. And the last one says that the radiation having thermal effect on the plant is uh, the answer would be your infrared radiation. So these are some of the questions that I've just quickly jotted down for that, which I thought might be very important from the exam point of view. Okay, guys. Um, so that's all for today. I hope that you guys had a productive session with me. I hope it was clear for you all. If you guys have more doubts or if you guys want me to take up some topic in which you guys are having trouble with, or if you guys want me to explain those topics better, then do drop it in the comments section. And you can also reach out to us. We're always there to help out, guys. And um, if you guys have any more doubts and queries do drop it in the comment section okay exams are also there the, they have just given up for the nabar exam they've just given out the tentative dates but i'm not sure whether it's going to be in september or but uh till then till the actual dates come out i would like you all to uh, request you all to continue revising for the exam as well as you can also uh, have more time to prepare well so that you guys will have higher chances of doing better in the exam right so guys if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon if you like the video do like uh, do like the video and hit the thumbs up button and you can also share with your friends right so let's meet for the next session with another topic